continue on with the questions then. They, I think they're ready to take on more questions. Phyllis, I think you started. Uh, yes, yes. There's a microphone right behind you. You had mentioned the proposed Lake McIntosh Reservoir. And my question is, how much of the water from Lake McIntosh will actually be coming to to Fayette County, and how much of that water is going to just be facilitating future growth in Korea? Um, Jack, you all answer. You seem to be the Lake McIntosh expert tonight. The land that the lake will flood is 100% owned by Fayette County. The water will be 100% Fayette County water. That, I, I learned something there. All right, Richard. Yeah, okay, this is a question for our state representatives. What I hear from the um, ARC is that we're behind the curve when it comes to traffic and part of road improvements. And I think the only real is the regional tax, which we're talking about adding to the existing, to, to create funds. So we're behind in the funding for those two. Is there any, have you, or will you consider any kind of limitations on the development side of the demand road stands, rather for the future to slow it down, let us catch up, and rather than reacting to what we have right now? Have any one of you made any type of proposal or have any kind of plans to do that? I understand your question. I think you wanted to know can we, have we considered slowing down we're behind in the curve Rose, the Rose, as opposed to reacting to okay. um, well I'm pretty sure I understand your question the problem with it is that you know growth growth is here and traffic is here and if we stop building roads uh, I don't know I don't know if that's I'm not sure how that's gonna I'm not sure how that's going to solve anything. I mean, I, it's a good question. It's the simple fact is, is that you know, we need more we need more transportation funding. That's for sure. Can we control whaling? Excuse me. What was I'm sorry. What was the question, sir? Control developments. Um, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Uh, Well, I mean, that's everybody's goal, I think, is to, is to take a look at where the growth is, where it's happening, bring all the interested parties to the table and see how we can best manage it. Now, different people have different opinions about whether or not that's happened to their satisfaction or not. Um, the simple fact is that, you know, the traffic is here, we need roads, but there's only a limited amount of funding available for these roads. It's outpacing, you know, the, the growth of the roads is outpacing the, the, the amount of money that's available. Uh, or so some would say, I don't want to, DOT's not here to protect themselves, so, um, so I'm not going to say anything else about that. Um, there's been several proposals to take, you know, to, to, to address that. You saw one of them uh, today was that somebody floated an idea of tacking on one cent statewide sales tax strictly for roads uh, that didn't go anywhere. There's going to be other proposals that are going to emerge to try to take care of some of this stuff. Which one's the best? I'm not real sure. Um, from my personal vantage point, um, you know, I think right now the way funding is set up, there's a certain percentage of money that's, del uh, that's available for roads and it's divided equally among congressional districts. And I think to me, that doesn't make a lot of sense because you take Congressional District 2, for instance, down in southwest Georgia, they don't have near the traffic and congestion problems that we do up here in Congressional District 3. To me, it makes more sense that a larger percentage of that money would not be available for equal division among Congressional districts. It should go towards more you know, congested Congressional districts so there'd be more funding available for these roads. That's one thing that I've sponsored in the past that didn't work. 
but uh, those are just a couple of examples. I mean, your question is a good one, but there's probably maybe, I don't know, there's three of us at the state level sitting here at the table, you'd probably hear three different things. So I'd like to give the hand line a chance to address that. <laughs> He's right on target on that. I, I think home rule, you have you have political subdivisions of cities and counties, townships, and then there's going to be this village, Chattahoochee Hill, uh, you know, village or whatever. That's where those decisions are made. I don't see the role of the state general assembly, the legislator, the senator, representative, dictating what growth there is and what growth there isn't. I, I don't see that as a function. I do know that there's a shortage of funds. I know there are pressures out there to build bicycle, uh, roadways, and there's pressure to build sidewalks, and there's pressure to do so much with so little. We have a very small stream of, of funding that's available to build roads and bridges, and that's really what it is. I'm not going to lecture you. I don't support controlling the growth. What I do support is a Immigration Reform Act in Washington. 75% of the growth that we're experiencing in our state are through illegal immigrants. So, and I'm not saying cut that off, and, you, you, and that's a spigot, you can control growth, but a large part of what the growth is in this state is coming from illegal immigration. And why do they come here? Because there's jobs and there's opportunities. I'm not opposed to it as long as it's legal. It's illegal, I don't like it. Well, I'll ask you one, one of the questions, I believe, is, I don't know what but thinking out of the box, when it comes to the roads, the shortage of funds, the lack of infrastructure, we need to get moved somewhere else, we're all thinking. And right now, 